really rare to find complete bits of armour or weaponry like this one in the ground because it often gets damaged by battle or the elements, which makes our next item truly special. Don't tell anyone, but I'm an absolute history geek. I keep a metal detector in the back of my car at all times. For me, happiness is snuffling around in a muddy field. An Iron Age trowel, made in Sheffield. Only I have never, ever found anything exciting, ever. But recently, I heard about an intriguing treasure dug up near my home in Kent. This, I have to investigate. Just last year, close to Canterbury in Kent, retired plumber Trevor came across a most unusual find. Oh, you never know, do you? What did you think it was when you found it? Originally, the signal sounded like a tin, you know, a very good signal, which you'd normally get with an old tin can, but when I moved the loose dirt away, I could see this green outline, and it was in a circle, and then when I disturbed it, there was a bit of bone in there. I could see a bit of bone, and I knew that there was something pretty serious there and big. It was made of some kind of metal, Curved in a dome with three small holes around the edge. What could it be? Trevor took it to Andrew Richardson of the Canterbury Archaeological Trust to see what he thought. As an archaeologist, you know, through your career, you get some amazing objects and stuff, but this was definitely one of the best. It's definitely one that I'll always remember. Andrew identified this rare find as a bronze helmet dated to about the first century BC. So, where is it from and who did it belong to? There's a clue in the date it was buried. It was at a time in our history when Iron Age Britain was about to change beyond all recognition. 2,000 years ago, on this coastline, a group of men lined up on these very cliffs, watching a fleet of Roman galleys led by Julius Caesar prepare to invade. So if you had to put money on it, is it a Roman helmet? which is probably made in Gaul. It's definitely not made in Britain. It is possible that it's acquired in Kent when Caesar actually does one of his raids into Kent in 55 or 54 BC and has some battles with the locals. It is possible that that's how the helmet came into somebody's possession living around here. So it could have been when Caesar did his one of his, his raids, raids yeah. he could have come yeah. up and then attacked a village yeah. and the chief warrior has a fight for about a week, <laughs> a week, a fight to the death with the Roman, slaying him and taking his helmet. So we think this may be a Roman helmet, but there's still one more mystery to uncover. As when it was excavated, there was another discovery, a small bronze treasure. This was revealed to be an English Iron Age brooch. This is odd because at such a turbulent time in British history, we've got a Roman helmet, buried in England in what experts say is a traditional Iron Age burial site. Intriguing. So who was buried in the helmet? When Andrew uncovered it, there were fragments of bone lodged inside. Could this be a British chieftain? I need a bone man. Right, now it's time to go all forensic and CSI. This is Daniel Antoine, curator of human remains at the British Museum. That's the helmet there. That's a wonderful helmet. It is incredible. It looks like an old GPO helmet. And these are the remains that were found in the helmet. Absolutely. In the case of a cremation, we're left with very small fragments. So could you tell if this is a man or a woman? Well, you look at different things for sexing. You can see that both these individuals have got a flat forehead. Yeah. Which you tend to find in females. So is this, is this a female? We haven't got enough, really, to say. You know, if you had to go one way or the other. It's really difficult, but... Yeah. The, the hints I'm getting from the skull suggest it's most likely to be a female individual. Now, we tend to think of all soldiers as being men, but contemporary classical records show that Celtic Iron Age women were just as fierce, strong, and as respected as their male counterparts. Indeed, the most famous Briton to fight the Romans was Boudicca, queen of the Iceni tribe. Boudicca led 100,000 British warriors to attack London and other Roman cities, killing over 70,000 in 60 AD. And to this day, a defiant statue of Boudicca stands by the Houses of Parliament. So, I reckon that our Roman helmet may well have been the war trophy of a fierce British woman who encountered the Romans in Kent. 
In fact, Julius Caesar said of the Kantiaki tribe, the people of Kent, they are the most civilized people in Britain. What a brown nose he was. But having lived here for a couple of decades, I can confirm that he's perfectly right. Thank you all.